What's up YouTube, this is D from Brooklyn and I'm bringing you over to the freshwater side not to abandon my saltwater people but it's because I want to talk about a topic that recently came up from my man Mike from Mass, Mass Aquariums and it was a general issue, not really a general issue but a discussion that came up in regards to you know, something happening he had a storm in which the house actually got hit by lightning and it affected the equipment in his house but it also brought up the topic of equipment failure contingencies and things that I have brought up before now with that being said the reason that I'm here is if you can hear that noise it is a pump that is really really loud and it is about to fail now certain things happen when equipment is about to fail they make noise, they shut off, they create surges of electricity. This one, for instance, is creating a noise that is so annoying that I most definitely am going to disconnect that pump probably within the next few minutes. But it also got me to check in another tank. So let's go over to the other tank. Now I came over to the little nano reef and... Uh, put my hands in the tank as we so often do because I noticed my protein skimmer wasn't working just came home from work put my hands over the tank and I felt like a humming like a buzzing and I was like whoa what the hell was that I checked myself to make sure I didn't have any uh my phone in my hand or something like that went back put my hand on the side of the tank and felt a tingling well Mike something that I mentioned this failed pump which was attached to my protein skimmer and it is not a no-name brand it is a reef octopus nano skimmer and there's nothing wrong with reef octopus but little did I know that pump was dying and it was actually releasing an electrical charge into the water something very dangerous because the only way I noticed it is because when I put my hand in the tank, I felt a buzzing and I says, wait a minute, something is wrong. <laughs> I put my hand on the tank again, I felt it again. So immediately I go unplug the heater, still feel it. Checking all of the electrical equipment that is in the water. Pump is there, unplug the pump, still feel it. So long story short, the pump had failed and it was releasing an electrical charge in the water that luckily for me did not kill the fish. But if it was strong enough for me to feel it with my fingertips, it could have been severely injuring to me. It could have been really dangerous to me. And I had mentioned it to Mike. The only reason why I mentioned in Mike from Mass is because we were talking about electrical grounds and probes. Of all the tanks that I've put together, this one tank, because it's so small, does not have a ground probe in it. Now, I'm going to use this as an example. They sell a ground probe, which is similar to a long piece of metal like this, but it actually has a wire on the end, which would attach to a, a ground, either a screw that's something in the ground or an electrical socket ground, uh, depending on the manufacturer, and you would put one end into the tank maybe in the back or in a sump wherever you got sump area and you would run that line from the ground probe to a grounded circuit or a something that is grounding down to the ground now funny enough that I mentioned to him the importance of having a ground probe and I didn't realize this tank didn't have a ground probe and that quickly it could have been very dangerous to me a kid or anybody in the house that could have put their hand in there could have got an electrical shot. So I'm taking this five minutes to just discuss with you and everybody out there just safety issues, safety, having grounds, be really cognizant. I know that's a big word. Be aware of your wires, how close they are to water anything that's coming out of the tank anything electrical make sure you have drip loops i'm gonna come out with a video soon about drip loops and 
how I have my wires run so that water does not run straight to them but they always have a gravity fed to bring water away from electrical outlets and and down to like a lower level without running to an electrical outlet but we think we're being careful accidents do happen be prepared hopefully this helps you guys and if you guys have anything running from your tank right to an electrical outlet be sure that you have a drip loop a drip loop is just a matter of having a wire run down before it runs to an outlet that means your wire comes out and runs down below the outlet and then goes up to your electrical if you got a power strip try not to leave power strips on the floor because power strips on the floor will eventually get wet they can lead to a fire they can lead to electrocution they can lead to a lot of dangers if you have pets in your house like dogs cats even children children are very curious they could touch an outlet they're going to get electrocuted so be weary be safe this is d been going for a while i'm playing with my little gimbal i got my camera on my little uh stabilizer here hopefully it's making a video a little better first time i'm using it. i had it sitting in the house uh but when i'm thinking about safety i find things that i had sitting in the house and hadn't been using so i hope this helps you guys out there salt water fresh water anything you got be safe be safe be safe people this is d signing out hopefully this helps you out man love peace and hair grease Lots of love to my cram box, Mike from Mass. Everybody out there, be safe, people. Be safe. I'm out. See ya.